Hello, people, and welcome back to Ethical Gaming. Uh, I, uh, my tummy be aching. I, I'm going to try and make this video kind of faster than the other ones because I'm tired. My tummy be aching, and I'm hoping that being around the fishies in the pond, you know, up in this little tranquil area, uh, will make things nice. I, I also, the, the view is nice. Like, the, the view is kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, I... But it turns out modding in coffee was a horrible idea. I thought that would help, but the coffee was not good. So I took that mod out immediately. Um, also, uh, one of my friends that plays on my realm, um, she made some bread. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out whether the bread is killing me or not. Anywho, uh, today on Ethical Gaming, we're going to talk about... Uh, well, I actually, originally this video was going to be called... Uh, Triple A games down bad, uh, and indie up good. Or, you know, I know it's called Triple A, but I think I'm just going to refer to them as... Ah! I don't know, it just makes sense since it's like three A's all together. And the main reason why uh, this video was original was... It's still kind of about that, but we I pivoted a bit since uh, something has entered my life. Something amazing. But we're going to begin by talking about this because... Uh, with the recent, there's been a recent trend, uh, maybe that's been going on for give or take a, in the past maybe couple years. Uh, a, a lot, and this trend mainly revolves around uh, AAA games having a decline in quality. And because of that decline in qu quality, um, indie games, you know, they just, they've been getting more attention. And also just indie games have been really fucking good recently. <laughs> Like a lot, like a lot of AAA games have either been coming out really undercooked, like the like the dough is still raw, or they just or they just been coming out with just more greedy, like a bit greedier tactics. Like you know the copious amount of live service games that have been coming out, and the only reason why they've been coming out is you know to kind of squeeze money out, since you know there are more reliable means of making money, because you know you got microtransactions, battle passes. A consistent player base, you know, stuff like that. Uh, money, you know, that's a lot, that's a big thing. Money, and it doesn't, and it, and it doesn't help that a lot of AAA games they try to copy each other, and the reason why they do that is because they, you know, it's a, it's safer to make money. You know, you it's a safer bet on making money, but that's at the cost of, you know, now shit's pretty stale. Like remember when back in like the early two thousands there was like a first person shooter everywhere, like there were. Fuck ton of first person shooters, and I played none of them. Now, do all these claims of AAA games, you know, do they li about like, do, they, does, do these claims have any merit? Well, let, let me just go off the top of my head with games I can think. Uh, let's see, we got a lot of the Pokemon series Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Oh, so there was also Shield. Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, they kind of really it, but you know, it still came out. Uh, no Man's Sky, got, uh, I live think, service games as well. well. I mean, that was a lot of fun. And yet, that's still a Marvel game. 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 Yeah, 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 that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Does that count as AAA, though? Is that a flop? Or do you stop walking around this world? Just get it straight to the point, because this list will go on forever. It's been it's been pretty consistent. It's been fairly consistent with AAA games. That's not to say indie games have been, you know, not dog shit. In fact, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of indie games, and among all of the beautiful, amazing gems, uh, is a sea of dog shit. Uh, I I would know. I play a lot of them. I love bad games. It's honestly I I love it. It's a hobby. I. The passion, it's a love, romantic. Are AAA games being absolute dog shit, especially more so in recent years, a bad thing? Yeah, no, it's it, it is an overall bad thing. It kills the reputation of, of not only these studios but games in general. Like, they just pump out this dog shit, and you know, oh, here you go, here's the slot piggies. Like, that's, like it's 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 not good. It's generally not good, but also at the same time, there are some positives, because especially with, with, with more people playing on PC more than ever, a lot of people are trying out more indie games, because, you know, there's a lot of really good indie games. Uh, there's a lot of them I've been playing, uh, like, there's Slate of Princess, 
Uh, I played that before it got really big. And honestly, peak game. Amazing game. Also, the pseudo regalia. Also, really fucking good. Um, also, Darkwood. Amazing game. I'm still waiting for Pyrocynical to release the video. It still hasn't even came out. Like, I check his channel every day. It's still not there. When is it going to come out? It's like October 27th now, and it still hasn't came out. Like, where is it? There's also that one game. I forgot the title of it. But, like, it's like, it has a dude, and he has, like, one arm. Like, he only has one arm. Like, you only have one arm. You have no legs. You have no arm. And it, he only has one arm. But, like, it, it's really cool. It's a really fucking good game. Point being, indie games have been on fucking fire. I think Hades is an indie game as well. And Hades is really fucking good. I haven't say how much I like Hades. AAA Studios slacking kind of helps these indie games, you know, become more relevant. Since people are, are A, like, or A, they don't want to support, uh, you know, slop. And also B... A lot of people just don't got the money for AAA games anymore. A lot of these games are like 60 plus dollars now. So it's pretty hard. Like $60. Like It's pretty hard to afford things. Like I know. It, I, like oh. What are you a fucking brokey? Yes. I still haven't played the new Zelda game. It's 60 bucks. I don't got 60 bucks to turn out. I'm sorry. And I'm not going to have 60 bucks for the next Mario game. Mar the next Mario and Luigi game. I'm not. I'm fucking broke. Maybe if the game was 40 bucks or 50 bucks, I would actually probably drop money on it. I probably would. But as for now, I, I think I'm going to stick to playing my legally acquired games, Minecraft, and also the one I really want to talk about. I really want to talk about this game. Is it time so yet? Hot. Is it true that AAA games kind of flopping is helping indie games rise up is that even true is it maybe because of social media because social media usage has become bigger and now being that more people have pc games they also have access to social media and are able to share these games more so maybe that's the reason maybe triple a games um kind of flopping hasn't been too much hasn't really been too much of an impact but then again there's been so much slop that it's that it's directing the attention to somewhere else well more importantly not just slot but overpriced games like persona 3 for example i'm not dropping 70 bucks for a game i'm sorry <laughs> no matter how good the game is i'm not dropping 60 bucks don't get me fucking started on call of duty modern warfare 6. i've seen the horrors i've heard the game was pretty good but Apparently the game is really fucking pricey, and also I don't have 300 gigs casually. I I need I need at least a hundred of those gigs for Bio Lizard. Play. This game is so peak. I actually think this game needs to be the gold standard for what companies should do the gold standard for triple a games i believe is this game i want to do a short review of this game because i really want to talk about this game let me put let me put in the context of like how accessible this game is like this game is so accessible my friend the the one that tried to poison me with sourdough bread uh she was able to pick up this game and just just pick it up immediately and have a blast. Mind you, she's never played a Sonic game in her life. In fact, I'm just going to flash some footage on screen from when I was streaming it uh, on, on, on uh, you know, link in the description, link in the description. Uh, and, and, like, she was, just, she was blasting through it. It's the first time picking up a Sonic Boost Formula game. A Sonic game ever, period. She has never interacted with a Sonic franchise. Not only is she able to play it pretty well, I mean, she, she's a gamer. She's a better gamer than me most of the time, honestly. It's pretty fucking depressing. But she, she's, she's, she's having a blast doing it. She wants to play more as well. I'm going to lose my laptop right soon. The point being, this game is so fucking fun. 
even if you're not a Sonic fan, right? Just like my friend, if you want to get into this series, if you want to try a boost formula or a modern Sonic or just a new Sonic game, play it. Pick it up. You will enjoy it. It's two games as one as well. You have Sonic Generations and you have Shadow Generations. And if you're worried about, about sinking a bunch of time into it, don't worry. Both of these are very short. They're short to beat, but if you really love the game, you have a lot to sink your teeth into. You have, there's so, there is a lot of content in both of these, especially in Shadow Generations. Oh my God. And by the way, Shadow Generations is the one we're focusing on. Sonic Generations, which is the first half of this game, is actually a remaster-ish of, of Sonic Generations from, I think it came out like about like 13 years ago. And by the way, that game is still a masterpiece. Amazing. The gameplay is amazing. Like playing as modern Sonic feels so good. Playing as classic Sonic is also fun. Like it's just, it's all around platforming fun. If you miss Sonic, and you also want to get into a bit of that new Sonic, amazing game to get into. Of course, it's it, it's not the story's not going to be insane, but we're, you're not playing this game for the story. You're playing it for the gameplay and Sonic. You're playing for Sonic, the blue blur. Also, uh, this goes without saying, but the music is amazing. The music is peak in Sonic gen Generations and in Shadow Generations. And let's just transition to Shadow Generations, please, about fucking time. Shadow Generations is the is the what is what my friend was playing. And I'm just going to get into like my playtime because uh, at the point of me recording it, I have beaten it and I'm on my way to 100% again. I am already over halfway there. I said I was going to stream myself 100%ing it. Uh, that was a bold faced lie. I couldn't fucking wait. Uh, just a couple things I love about this game. No lives. This is this might be a minor thing for a lot of people, but for me, I hate lives in video games. I think all it does is hold back players from wanting to try and experiment. And I think for a lot of, for pretty much all games, that is very important. Like even for a game like Dark Souls, where you know, it's super fucking hard. I think dying, coming back, trying again, it's part of the fun. And I think, uh, and I think uh, Shadow Generations peak, like the fact they got rid of lives, just, I was able to, I retried levels over and over and over without feeling any guilt. And they took out lives in Sonic Generations as well. There's no, like, because in the old Sonic Generations, there were lives. But in the new one, there aren't. And I can't stress how amazing that is. Because I can just experiment all I want and have fun. And, I, and if I die or, or it's like, oh shit, I really want a faster time. Restart, boom. Easy. And the thing with Shadow Generations, there are no load times when you retry. None. Like, it, it's bad. Like, we're finally in 2024. No fucking load times at all. And also for your frame rate geeks, um, like, like, like your frames per second geeks, um, yes, it runs at 120 frames per second on PC. On console, I believe it runs at 60. And on Switch, it runs at 30. But either way... 120 frames i can't comprehend that anyway so i actually don't give a fuck <laughs> i don't give a fuck either what it, like like 60 is my max i'm sorry once you go past 60 i don't care 30 frames to me looks decent 60 frames i i don't need anything more personally i, I can't comprehend anything past 60 frames per second I, per second i got monkey brain i can't uh, i'm also gen z so i got the attention span of a goldfish so i feel like that maybe plays a part like, I'm pretty sure the fish below me have a higher attention span than me. The cutscenes, dude. The cutscenes. Oh my god, the cutscenes. They're so beautiful. They're so fluid. The framing, the storyboarding, the everything, the writing, it's so fucking good. Shadow's story is amazing. It puts a, such an important bow on this character's story. And the best part is, if you know nothing about Shadow, in the start of the game, you can select Shadow's story and get a synopsis and a pretty damn good one at that of his story it's it's just it's so it's so good for beginner players first coming into here wondering who this character is and it's amazing for veteran players like me who have been fans of sonic since they came out the womb and just, and like oh my god i love shadow so much if you have if, and if no one has noticed uh shadow is my favorite sonic character 
I don't care if I am generic for saying that. I love Shadow. I love Sonic as well. There are days where Sonic is my favorite character. But as it stands right now, Shadow is my favorite character. Do I have main character syndrome? Ah, oh, damn. The game has like this open zone area similar to Sonic Frontiers. But it executes it so much better than Sonic Frontiers as well. Like, it's just so fun to run around as Shadow, boost around as Shadow. I love the boost. The boost in this game, I just got to say, I'm surprised the Hedgehog Engine 2, you know, the game, the one that uses Sonic Forces, I don't know if Frontiers uses Hedgehog Engine 2, but oh my gosh, they got that shit on lockdown with Shadow Generations. I didn't think it was possible to make the best boost formula game from it, but they, they did, and it's amazing. It is amazing. The open zone is so nice like you can just run around have a good time just moving you know a platformer is good when moving around it's just fun all the collectibles dude all the collectibles make me geek out as a sonic fan i'm still trying to get the last pages for gerald's journal and also for all you console motherfuckers you lucky bastards you lucky bastards i got the digital deluxe edition just so i could play early also i don't have a ps5 ps4 or xbox type thing whatever the hell whatever xbox is out right now and i refuse to play it on the nintendo switch so i played it on pc more so because i was forced to and then you guys got so lucky because you guys got gerald's journal you have gerald's journal you don't know what, like for those of y'all who aren't sonic fans oh my fucking god <laughs> i'm still looking for the last journal pages in the game I don't know where they are. I want, I want to read his journal so badly. I love Gerald's character, by the way. I love how in this game he looks so nice and huggable. He looks like a huggable grandpa that just you know, showers you with love. Dude, he's just a guy that had a really fucked up mental breakdown. <laughs> Lastly, and not least, and most importantly, the gameplay. Oh my gosh, all the zones are good. I love how you're not... Sw this is like... I really... like. For the last one, I've been getting really tired of Sonic games swapping between characters. Like, here, this stage you play as Sonic. This stage you play as Classic Sonic. This stage you play as this character. This stage you play as Tails. Like, I get it was a thing back then, and it's been going forward ever since. But I'm just really tired of swapping between characters. I just want to play as one character. And Shadow, oh my god. Every single stage has been amazing. Shadow has made me love the 2D stages. I used to moderately dread the 2D stages because honestly, I, ever since the 3D area era, like I wasn't a big fan of the 2D stages. And this is coming from somebody who loves Sonic CD. Sonic CD is one of my favorite Sonic games of all time. I love that game. And dude, I just, dude, this game, this might just be my favorite Sonic game. I know recency bias is strong, but oh my gosh. It's so fucking good. Like with all the abilities Shadow has, Shadow has chaos control, which lets him stop time, literally fucking stop time for five seconds, which helps you not only get a faster time when trying to get S rank, you know, get the fastest time, but also it, you can do it to like find hitting paths. Like, you know, if you like in one of the stages, you can stop time as a bunch as, as one of the Eggman robots are throwing rocks. And then by stopping time, you can now use the rocks as as a means to finding like homing attack on them as a means to find another path and then take that path to get to get one of the um the, one of the collectibles like oh my god it's so fucking good it's even a faster route to it's so good you can and this is not just like on that one stage every stage i swear to you has like some way of using chaos control in a way to not only make make your progress significantly faster but also just help you find little roots it's just you feel so good you get in that flow state and this game probably has the best flow state of any sonic game like i think like a lot i feel i've heard a lot of people nitpick about shadows controls how he can be he can feel a little slow at times but i think this is one of the times where they finally did it correctly because not only does it feel like I can actually control Shadow, but also you just get in that flow state. Because I like I'm of the opinion that I think the boost formula has potential, but I think a lot of the boost games fall flat because how fast Sonic is. I think Sonic speed is sometimes more of a detriment than 
something that helps especially when it comes to getting newer players into things but this game it's perfect it has the perfect balance of everything sugar spice and everything nice yeah the game plays amazing all the ability shadow gets is amazing uh if you want to watch trailers on it go for it i i actually don't want to spoil too much on it even though they showed them all in trailers because i think it'd be more fun if you just found out on your own still though amazing this game is peak if you haven't even touched a sonic game before i highly recommend getting it and another thing about this game it's not 60 bucks it's 50. so you know have at it y'all have at it like like I know 10 bucks isn't the biggest difference, but it's it's 10 bucks cheaper than the entire fucking market. And for a lot of people like me, 10 bucks is a world of a difference. So trust me. This please if you ha if you haven't gave Sonic a shot, give it a shot. Shadow Generations and even Sonic Generations are both amazing games. Now, I said earlier that this that I think this game is a really good example for AAA companies and, you know, tri AAA game studios. Just take notes. Take notes from this game. And I'm just going to say them all out right here. What, what notes to take from Sonic X Shadow Generations? Release a game that is fully polished and just when, when, it, when it comes out the oven, it's ready. No need to put it back in the oven several times with tiny little patches and updates because it's gonna it's still it's still gonna be meh. It's still gonna be blah. No, put it in the oven, fully cook that shit, take it out. As in, release the game done, polished, clean, play tested. Make sure the game is good and playable when it's on release. That is extremely important. When this game came out, typically with a lot of Sonic games. They suck. They, they, they honestly suck. Like so, like Sonic Frontiers, I think that, that, that... I have a lot of opinions on Sonic Frontiers. I'm very mixed on that game. But I believe that game needed some patches on release. Same thing with... Same thing with Sonic Forces. I, don't, I think that game needed some patches. They even tried to do Super Sonic as DLC, which is really fucking scummy. But I'm really glad that it seems like from Sonic Forces, Sega has really been learning their lesson. And it shows with not just Sonic Frontiers, but even Shadow Generations. Another really good thing about this game is, I brought it up already, but $50. 50 fucking dollars. Thank God it's not 60 This game, I would say, is like, I think $50 is worth. I think it's worth I am also of the belief that games shouldn't be more than fifty dollars. I think forty to fifty dollars is the is like the best is a good range for titles like this, and I think this game deserves that price. This is one of the times where I I can fully say this game deserves the the price. Like Mario Odyssey, for example. Mario Odyssey is one of, if not my favorite fucking Mario game. It's still sixty fucking bucks. I love the game, but I still firmly believe that it should be 50. Same thing with Breath of the Wild. Blasphemous claim. I know. It's it's such an open world, expansive game. I still think it's 50 bucks. Not because I think the game is, you know, is bad. It's not. It's a fucking masterpiece. But I just don't think games should be that fucking expensive. I don't think games should be that expensive. I firmly believe that. Oh uh, no, there's no microtransactions. None. Now, if you want to count DLC as microtransactions, well, then go ahead. I mean, it technically is. It, it, it is a microtransaction, yes. But um, I'm not really considering it one here, mainly because I'm mainly talking about the more malicious microtransactions. The one, you know, where you pay to get pay to win type deal. None of that bullshit. The only thing you can get is skins. And they're not overpriced at all. They're cute. They're callbacks. And, you know, they're just fun. I like it. I like it a lot. It's cool. So if you're going to do DLC or microtransactions, well, just DLC in general, have it be tasteful. Tasteful DLC. One that's nice. One that's good. One one that's fun. And I think these. this is fun. Simple skin swaps. You know, I, th I think there's all... I don't know if you can get the art book as well. 
as a as like an add-on because I know I got it since I got the digital deluxe edition. But yeah, you know, stuff like that I think is a good DLC. Another thing about this game that I think is really important, especially nowadays with how how greedy a lot of companies are, and this especially goes for Pokemon. And I'm mentioning Pokemon because I've seen the leaks. More importantly, I've seen the chat logs. And let's just say I am very disappointed in how a lot of people in Game Freak view Pokemon. And what I mean by that is with this simple phrase that I think encap encapsulates what Sega did. Focus on the game and not the brand. I think in, this is one of those situations where the game, like the brand was still in mind, but the game still took precedent. And it shows in the quality. And I could be wrong in this, and this can be even be included in a point. I heard from somewhere, allegedly, I want massive fucking, like I want allegedly to be in, in like cap. Because I am not even certain that this is true or not. I've just heard it more than once. And so I just want to put it out there. But I've heard that um, director of this game. Fuck, I forgot his name. Uh, he he asked for a one year plus. You know, plus one, one more year to work on this game. And he got the approval. And if that is true, it fucking shows. Like, I'm like... Just, I'm probably going to be flashing gameplay all throughout this, this section of the video. But like, it just shows. Oh my god, also sorry for the look, if the gameplay is low quality. Uh, streaming this is really... Uh, I don't know why this stream puts makes the quality so damn low. It hurts. It hurts my soul. But like, it's so good. The animations are so good. I, oh! Oh, it's so good! But yeah, if that's true... Um, another point time give the give the artist that make your game time You may not believe the artist but the people that make this game and not just this game But games in general the coding the making the textures the music Everything that goes into a game every single person that makes a game is an artist Another thing is like I brought it up earlier with AAA games copying each other like with the copious amount of live service games and I think this game is also another amazing example of tastefully taking inspiration and copying another game. Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. If you guys don't remember, uh, Nintendo released Super Mario 3D World. They re-released that on the Switch. And alongside it put Bowser's Fury, which just like Shadow Generations, is pretty much a whole extra mini game where you have where you run around and do shit it's just a whole little extra mini game that's all that's you that's kind of running on a similar gameplay as the main game and both of these games both both bowser's fury and shadows generations like there's a lot of things that are similar with them like for instance you have the doom like, like you have you have doom which is in the which, which is in the center of the map you have bowser that is in the center of the map bowser Bowser can um, change, alter the, the area that you're in. Doom can alter the area that, that he's in. Um, it's a Also, um, you have an open area, especially a white area, <laughs> that with a lot of water that you can travel on. It's, a, it, 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 it's Bowser's Fury, but Sonic coded. And I wouldn't want anything less. This game did an amazing job at doing what what bowser's fury did and honestly i'm if i'm heavily considering doing a comparison video after i 100 percent shadow generations because i've 100 percent at bowser fury i loved it a fuck ton i would play an entire fully length mario game actually that is pretty much fully length and i love it for that you know that's another point i'm gonna get into uh i love how this game doesn't waste my time there is nothing in this game that feels like it's wasting my time. Everything feels like it's there purposefully. Even the side content, I don't feel like my time's being wasted. And this game isn't even terribly long. It's not long at all. You can beat this game in like three to four hours, or two hours even, actually. You can beat this even, even less time. Like, it's a short game. However, it's one of those games where, like, it can be as long as you want. 
But the point I'm trying to make is like it doesn't waste your time. And I'm glad the game isn't doing that. I'm glad the game is just really fun. And those type of games have endless replayability, which is what I'm going to do after I'm done recording this. <laughs> probably not. I'm probably going to go to bed. Yeah, also, yeah, back to the Bowser's Fury point. Let me know if you guys would like to see a Bowser's Fury and Shadow Generations comparison. Because if, if this video series is at all successful, uh, I will 100% do a comparison video. And luckily, uh, the shackles will be off of me and I'll have more time to dedicate to it. And one last point. Uh, this is one that has to do with Sega in general. Be friendly with your consumers. Sega... Like if you know Sega, and if you interact it with them in their in the community in the Sonic community in general, they are so nice to them. Like they are tapped in. They are fucking tapped in when it comes to the Sonic community. Like if you just scroll around on their Twitter or any socials, you just know they're tapped in and they're listening. Like more than ever, they are listening, and it just feels really good knowing that the the company that you're that you're that you know you're giving your money towards isn't soulless like yes they're doing it to also make money but at the same time it reminds i don't know to me it's also reminding me like hey these are people that work here you know i like being reminded that the that the company i'm giving my money to isn't just a, a company it's a coalition of people working together to make products and trying to make money together putting their heart and soul into shit. And that just feels really fucking good to me. I understand that, you know, they don't, they're not thinking about me all the time. I know that. I know they're think. I know a lot of the times they might be thinking, they, there's a chance they're thinking about, yo, well, we need that bag. And I respect that. I honestly very much respect that. <laughs> but also, but there's still like, you know, they have us they have us in the mind and i like how they have us in their mind it just feels good like even with the fan games like if you anybody knows sega and fan games you know they they love to give them give fan games a kiss on on the forehead they they like they love to kiss them you know pat their head and you know, tell them you're doing really good champ in fact we support you like sega's the goat bro they're just the goat they really are so one of the uh, nice things about having a low metabolism is that it delays the inevitable. Uh, so as I'm slowly dying here, I would like to thank you all for watching Ethical uh, Gaming. Uh, this has been a very fun episode. And again, like I said, if you want a Bowser's Fury comparison to Shadow Generations, I would have a fuck ton of fun doing that. So, you know, tap in, subscribe, like. If you made it this far, comment. Uh, what do you think about, you know, the AAA gaming industry? How do you think it's affecting indie games? Uh, I would like to know. Uh, th thank you all for watching. Uh, I don't have milk on me right now. So I think I'm just going to die. See ya.